And okay, we're live. Thanks. All right. Hi there. This is Dr. Jeff Snyder. I'm having an opportunity here tonight to do a presentation for Phoenix Hill Library. Uh, and we have a little bit of a glitch. That's how things start off sometimes. Uh, and we uh, just have to adapt around that. In fact, uh, I think that it was um, said at one point uh, that uh, those who adapt uh, will thrive and those who, who, who cannot adapt will perish. Well, I'm gonna adapt at this point to allow us to uh, at least have some information to share. Uh, it seems as though the PowerPoint presentation uh, connection on the computer is just not working properly. So I'm gonna try, uh, we're gonna go through a process here to teach you a little bit um, and what this program is, is a program on reducing low back pain. And why did I choose that topic? Because uh, low back pain is one of those things that tends to be uh, an issue with uh, our society um, and does affect people um, at, uh, as they age. And so we're trying to give some strategic uh, ways that people can manage low back pain uh, on their own for, for the most part. And I'm um, just going to give you some ideas as to how to make that work. So uh, as you might see, I'm going to I'm going to be jumping back and forth between my computer and uh, the tablet, which I'm currently on, because the computer does not want to connect properly to the system. So uh, I'm going to share with you a little bit of information here regarding low back pain. So there's some interesting facts about low back pain uh, worldwide. Back pain uh, it's a uh, single leading cause of disability, preventing many people from engaging in work as well as other everyday activities. Back pain is one of those uh, of the most common reasons for missed work. Uh, back pain accounts for more than 264 million lost days of work per year. Uh, experts estimate that up to 80% of the population will experience back pain at some point in their life. Back pain can affect people of all ages. Uh, it also is um, the third most common reason for visits to a doctor's office behind uh, skin disorders, believe it or not. Uh, so um, let's see what else. People with low back pain recover. However, the recurrence is common. And for small percentages of people, the condition will become chronic and debilitating. All right, let me switch screens here to a little information. Okay, so what causes low back pain? Well, you might assume that there are certain things that you're, you're probably familiar with, such as sprain strains, uh, and a sprain and a strain is, uh, they're a little different. So a, um, a uh, sprain is something that happens to a ligament. A sprain is to a muscle. It can also be a ruptured disc. Um, you can also have, um, as well, uh, irritated joints, all of which can uh, lead to back pain. While sports injuries or accidents can also cause low back pain, sometimes the simplest of movements, for example, picking up a pencil from the floor, uh, that can also cause painful problems. In addition, arthritis, posture, obesity, even psychological stress can cause uh, or, or uh, complicate low back pain. And back pain can also directly result from disease of the internal organs, such as kidney stones, kidney infections, blood clots or bone loss. And that's the reason why when a person does come in our office, we are uh, very careful about how we screen a person because back pain may not be directly spinal related. There are other reasons for, uh, for back pain to occur. So with today's uh, growing emphasis on quality care, clinical outcomes and cost effectiveness, spinal adjustments uh, are, re are receiving increased attention. The epidemic of prescription opioid overuse has led to a wider acknowledgement of the benefits of non-drug approaches to pain. Spinal adjustments are a safe and effective non-drug spinal, uh, spinal pain treatment, and it reduces pain, uh, decreasing the need for medication in some cases, rapidly advancing uh, physical therapy, and requiring fewer passive forms of movement such as passive treatments it is, such as bed rest. A growing body of research supports spinal adjustments um, after extensive studies of all available care for low back pain. The Federal Agency for the Healthcare Policy and Research um, recommends that low back pain sufferers choose the most conservative care first and recommends that spinal adjustments as the only safe and effective drug-free form of uh, initial prevention uh, professional treatment for low back problems. 
in adults. So there's uh, there's a number of studies that are out there in um, a couple of different journals, the Annals of Internal Medicine, Spine, the Journal of the American Medical Association, and all are pointing to uh, various studies that do show that low back pain is effectively treated through chiropractic adjustments. And in fact, when they looked at certain studies, they saw that uh, the low back pain in conjunction with other things such as medical treatment um, compared to medical treatment alone, they found that the low back pain treatment that occurred when, com when combined with chiropractic adjustments really, really made a difference. But we're not here to talk about the adjustments because that's something that would be done in our office. We're here to talk about uh, more so about um, what you can do on your own. So um, how do you minimize low back pain? Well, there's a number of different things you can do. And I'm going to just run through the list and then we're going to go back and talk about each one. You can maintain a healthy diet and healthy weight. You can maintain act, uh, remain active and avoid prolonged inactivity or bed rest. You can warm up or stretch before exercise or physical activities such as gardening or well, snow shoveling for that matter, as we just did. Maintain proper posture. And that's a challenge to do when people are working from home. Um, and a segue for a moment, we did a program uh, a number of months back on um, helping people to uh, uh, manage their posture when at home working. So we'll, I'll touch upon that in a moment uh, here. Uh, wear comfortable shoes, uh, low heeled shoes for that matter, because that can affect the low back, um, especially you men don't wear high heeled shoes, that's for sure. <laughs> but no, really, the women obviously have to pay attention to wearing high heeled shoes. And uh, when lifting an object, lift with your knees, uh, keep the object close to your body. And um, working with a chiropractor, uh, you're, if you have one or if you don't have one, you can work with me, obviously, to ensure that your workstation is ergonomically correct. So we're going to talk a moment here about maintaining healthy diet and weight. And so how is it that you can uh, assess your own uh, diet and also, for that matter, if you have the proper weight? So there are a couple different ways you can do so. And I wish I had my screen up right now. Uh, this is just a shame that I can't show you the screen. Uh, maybe I can. I'm wondering if I could just do a, well, I'm going to try something here. We're going to, we're going to attempt to do a, to flip the screen. I'm not sure if I can flip the screen and you, or maybe I can. Let's see. There is a camera. Let's see what this looks like if I do so. Just give me some feedback if you can. There we go. Look at that. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. That works. Okay. So here we are. Should have done this to begin with. Okay, so maintaining a uh, healthy diet and weight. And I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit so you can maybe see it a little bit better. Let's see, there we go. So you have a website right there, okay? And you can obviously screenshot that, take a picture if you want to. Um, this is right to the National Library uh, Medicine. Uh, it is a BMI calculator. So when you use a BMI calculator, you can determine your, uh, based upon your height and your weight, if you have a proper, uh, if your weight is appropriate or not. Now, there are some caveats to that, and that is that if you by chance are um, a little more muscular, then it tends to uh, not be uh, a very effective uh, use. So the other thing that I like to use is an app, and this is an app called My Fitness Pal. Um, it's a really decent app. There is a free version of that. The free version, I'm gonna just switch around here on the screen for a moment. The uh, free version, uh, there is a paid version. It's fairly nominal in price, but the, uh, the free version works just the same. You can uh, go on there and plug in uh, exactly what it is you're eating and you can get a little very tedious, but you can do so. And believe it or not, there's um, just a, a slew of, of foods that are listed on there. So you can put on there that you're eating um, some given brand name of some given product, and it will most likely have it there. And then you just need to know exactly how much of it you're eating. So if you don't have a scale, a kitchen scale, I would recommend getting a kitchen scale. They're fairly cheap. You can get one on Amazon for about $15. And then you can determine exactly how many ounces of chicken or how many ounces of pasta you're eating and plug it in. And it helps you to kind of manage your weight a little bit better by, by how much food you're consuming. And then there's a section on the same app that allows you to plug in how much exercise you got and what kind of exercise. So at the end of the day, you'll know what your caloric intake and output was. 
and determine if that's actually something that is, uh, if, you're, if you're benefiting your body. And, and the reason why we're mentioning this is because the amount of stress that occurs on the spine when you have excessive weight is, uh, it can be pretty, pretty intense if there's um, you know, enough excessive weight. Uh, obviously, it's putting undue stress on the low back. Okay, so let me switch screens here and see if I can give you, there we go, we're gonna switch, screen. we're gonna go back again so I can show you here, here we go. Maintain active and uh, avoid prolonged activity or bed rest. So what I'm showing you here are just a couple different options. Uh, obviously on the right-hand side of the screen, you can see here YMCA, Planet Fitness, LA Fitness, these are all local. Um, join a gym, uh, they're fairly nominal. Planet Fitness is fairly inexpensive. The YMCA has been a, you know, a, a staple in, in Phoenixville for quite some time. Um, LA Fitness, obviously right over here in the uh, Collegeville area. But what is this on the uh, left-hand side? These weights right here, I put that on there because it's a decent system. They're fairly, yeah, they're not cheap, they're fairly expensive. But for anybody who wants to invest in something, uh, these guys over here, they're called power blocks. And essentially there's a pin in it that allows you to extract a certain amount of weight. And that way you can uh, take that weight and um, utilize that for your exercises, such as doing uh, squats or lunges, um, or if you're doing bicep curls or chest press or whatever else. Um, they run somewhere around uh, $300, $400, depending upon what you're getting. But what's nice about it is that you can have uh, 50 pound dumbbells. Um, they do sell in less expensive ones also that have less weight, but they, it gives you the opportunity to have um, weights in a small, area. So if you live in an apartment, it would fit just nicely. And uh, obviously joining the gym would be a, a good thing. So remaining active um, in the wintertime, the YMCA has a nice track. They have a nice pool there. Uh, LA Fitness has a pool as well. But again, we're in COVID right now. So it is a little bit challenging to use these places when you're trying to be a little safe. Uh, so swimming may not be the right thing, but there are lots of activities you can do. And, and there you don't even have to, you don't have to join a place. You can go outside, providing that your body can handle the cold uh, weather. So uh, also keeping this in mind as well, you wanna make sure that you're uh, warming up or stretching before exercise or physical activity, such as gardening or anything else. So um, make sure that you're warming up. Uh, it doesn't matter what you're doing. It matters that you are, um, taking the time to stretch beforehand. Uh, best thing to do is to start off by moving a little bit, get your body, just get the joints moving, and then do some stretching. You don't wanna stretch cold. Okay, so um, now the other thing that's also important is posture. We can get into talking about posture a lot, but this essentially is what we're talking about here. You don't, your, your, how you stand can affect your body. You can see specifically, because we are talking about low back, Pain. You can see here how in, um, in, in this one here, you can see that forward head positioning can really change the back positioning. And also a kind of a forward head positioning here can shift things and can cause sway back. All depends on how the spine is positioned. So again, these are, uh, just consider the fact that your posture really does um, affect you know, it's not just one area of your spine, it's all throughout. So I wanna see if I, if I address this on the next screen. I don't recall, let me just give you a moment here. As I said before, we're just a little bit technically challenged right now, so. Okay, yeah, so what I wanna do is talk about posture for a moment a little bit further. And that is that um, posture behind a computer, if you're sitting, working at a computer, and I'm not gonna get into detail about what you should do and how you should correct that because we did do a talk for the library uh, a few months back. Uh, we did a talk um, that is on the uh, website, on the Phoenix Full Library's website. You, you can access the entire talk there, but I did speak about uh, various tools that you can use, um, using uh, proper monitor positioning, uh, setting up your keyboard appropriately, proper type of chair and so forth. And it's all on that program. Okay, so let's go to the next slide here. All right, so wearing comfortable shoes, uh, also important, uh, low heel shoes, as I mentioned already. Uh, I would also add to that and suggest that sometimes we need to use orthotics. 
And an orthotic is something that can be put into a shoe uh, rather than going and getting new shoes because you're having problems with your feet that might be affecting your spine. Um, we use some technology in our office and uh, I'm happy to have anybody come in even do a, to do a screening. If you're interested in doing that, you can contact our office and that information will be at the end of the program. Um, the technology scans the foot, looks at the arches to see if you have any arch defects. And if so, then there's some suggestions regarding orthotics, but, uh, and your orthotics are custom made, so you're aware of that as well. But if you're looking to get something yourself at the store, um, I don't necessarily agree, like the Dr. Schulz, they don't give the type of support that I, uh, that I think is appropriate for the foot. Um, custom is, is definitely better, but you can find some orthotics out there that uh, do, do give some support uh, a little bit better than, uh, especially if you wear flip-flops or if you wear some low profile shoes. If you're female, a lot of these uh, shoes tend to not have much of an arch support. So getting something is better than nothing for sure. But if you are looking at certain shoes, uh, what has always been uh, uh, mentioned, uh, and especially uh, I had spoken to a podiatrist recently who suggested that Birkenstock makes a fantastic shoe, not just a sandal. So if you're looking for something that's a little bit wider in the front, um, I would say that wearing Birkenstocks would probably be, uh, again, the, the sandals in the summertime shoes. Uh, they have some uh, stylish to a degree. I'm not really thrilled about the look of the Birkenstock, but they are very... Uh, they do, they do a good job, uh, a lot of good support. So lifting with your knees, um, consider if you have a, uh, if you have your snow shovel, how are you using your snow shovel? If you have a straight armed type snow shovel, in other words, one that's not ergonomic, it's not going to help you uh, to keep the stress off your low back, but you can still Get the, get the snow up, bend it with your knees. Um, well, I'll show you the screen here as well regarding how to now obviously do so. Okay, so obviously bend with your knees. It's fairly simple there, but just be aware that you need to do that. And the other thing I would add to that is you want to make sure that you're switching arms as well. So you do a couple shovels this way and then switch to the other side so you can use the hands and the arms on the other side so you balance out the muscles on the back because it's too much fatigue for the muscles on one side. And then when you're lifting boxes of any sort, bend down, squat down, don't bend over straight. You come down all the way, you grab the box and then stand up with it. Um, that's really, uh, in, essentially, it's fairly simplistic, but that is essentially what you want to do. If you're um, bending down, keeping your legs straight and lifting the box, you're putting too much stress on your spine doing so. Okay. There's a, then, question um, in the chat. There's a question in the chat, uh, Jeff. Oh, okay. Uh, I don't know if I can see what that... Hold I can, I can uh, read it. Uh, somebody uh, wants your opinion on ortho feet. They purchased that lately and they want to know your opinion on those. Orth, ortho feet. Yes. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I am not familiar with ortho feet, but tell you what, let me do this right now because I do not know much about ortho feet. Let's see if I can... Ortho feet. Ortho feet, okay. And these look like they are, okay, ortho feet. I guess these are shoes. I've never come yes, across Yes, they're orthopedic them. shoes, yes. Yes, I see that now. Okay, so I'm gonna look, at, I'm gonna look at, that, at that for a moment, see if I can, well, if my computer will let me. It's going slow for some reason, as I said before. It might be my, I don't know if it's my, I don't think it's my internet connection. Here it comes, okay. Ortho feet. Uh, there's probably a little bit too much here to read through at this point. But uh, I, I would say if anything, any kind of an orthopedic shoe, and mostly I would say podiatrists would have a better um, opinion about this than I would, uh, just because they're probably working with these a little bit more than I am. But uh, let's see, ortho feed. I don't know much about this at this point, other than to say, um, I'll take a look at it. And if, uh, if you, and again, I don't have, um, let me see if I can look at the chats. I, Speeding. Well, hold on, there might be a chat screen. Oh, chats, hold on. Okay, here we go, I do see the screen now. Okay, so if uh, if Donna, uh, you're the one who asked that question, if uh, at the end of the program here, you'll see our contact information, I think I have it on the screen. Uh, be feel, feel free to reach out to me on this one. I'll take a look at this, at this information about ortho feet and give you uh, my, my opinion about it. Uh, I would say that for the most part though, any, um, 
any uh, orthopedic shoe is going to be built to give you a wider toe box at the front of the the, the front of the foot, and it's um, going to um, give you the proper support throughout. They tend to be designed fairly well when you when you're dealing with specific orthopedic shoes, um, but that that would be definitely a, a something to consider an orthopedic shoe of any sort, um, something that's recommended from uh, orthopedic uh, physicians that work with the foot or podiatrists, I, I would have confidence in as well. Okay. All right. So um, I did mention about the uh, workstation uh, program, as I had talked about before, ergonomics, but I'm going to give you a, one other piece of information, and that is just so you don't have to go over to the other uh, program that we had done with, uh, with, the, with the, uh, the library. Uh, and that is, uh, if you are working from home and you're trying to get your ergonomics down, one of the things I would advise you regarding the low back is that you have a decent chair, something that has a decent lumbar support. If you don't want to go out and buy another chair that has a good lumbar support, you can buy just a lumbar support, go on Amazon, find a decent lumbar support. We sell lumbar supports on our office, but there's plenty of them on, on Amazon as well. And you want to make sure that you have some decent lumbar support. And one of the keys to using a lumbar um, uh, pillow or some type of a support of some sort is that when you do put it on your chair, that you don't let it slide down to the bottom of the base of the chair. When you put it on your chair, you want to make sure that it is slightly up so that way the curve of the lumbar support fits into the small of your back. If it's sitting on the base of the chair, in other words, at the bottom of the back of the chair, then when you slide back in your chair, you're not going to be supporting your low back much at all. So when you do sit back, lift it slightly. And so that it, fits, it fits into the small of your back. That would be uh, the best way to manage that. And then there are other keys to ergonomics as well. Uh, and it goes into other areas of the spine, but we're talking about low back here. So I'm not gonna get into that in detail, but there are definitely ergonomic considerations for the entire spine and your hands and everything else. And I went through that program as I mentioned before, in the program, that, the program that we did was called "Improving the Home, Improving the Home Workstation in a COVID World." That's what it's called: Improving the Home Workstation in a COVID World. Okay, so believe it or not, there's actually one other thing that I need to consider as well, and I don't know how if anybody here that's watching this now or anybody in the future who might be watching this uh, recorded, um, if anybody smokes. You might think to yourself, what does smoking have to do with low back pain? Well, it does. Uh, inflammation, uh, the chemicals that are in smoke just wreak havoc on your body and can definitely cause problems in, in uh, messing up the disc and the low back. Um, so I would really strongly advocate quitting smoking. Now, it's not so easy. Uh, there are methods out there. There's hypnosis. In fact, there's a hypnotist I know in Phoenixville that does a pretty good job at helping people in that arena. Um, so I can uh, share that information with you at a later date as well, if you're interested. But I would actually recommend to you that um, you reach out to our local hospital, Phoenixville Hospital. They do a smoking cessation program. Uh, and I looked it up on their website. It's there, at least it's there listed. So I'm hoping it's current. Um, it's an eight-week interactive program, which addresses the uh, three chains of addiction, uh, behavioral changing skills, medication, and social support. Um, sessions, according to the website, they're on Thursdays um, every other month, and they do for telephone consultations as well, and they do list their phone number, but uh, you can get that, I'm sure, by looking it up as well. Uh, smoking cessation is one of those things that I think is extreme, extremely important. It goes beyond low back pain. It goes into other areas of health. And um, so I want to make sure that, that you, know, you address that if you are one who smokes or for that matter, well, one who chews even for that matter. All right. So there is uh, one more thing I want to share with you, and that is um, something I'm going to give to you as a means of being able to um, uh, do some exercises on your own. Uh, this is actually a grouping of exercises that I provide to our patients and they're fairly uh, easy to do. They're not um, uh, intensely um, uh, engaging exercises, something that almost anybody can do, but definitely useful and helpful. So I'm gonna ask for you, if you do have your, um, your phone, 
or if you're watching it on your phone, uh, if you're watching it on your computer, great, take your phone out because I'm going to ask you to uh, point to the screen in just a moment. And if you don't have that, you can take the website that's going to be listed here and you can go to, to the website. It's going to give you the opportunity to uh, get um, a report, uh, not a report, a, uh, an interactive um, exercise program. So if you do point your, uh, your camera right at that QR code, it will bring you right to it. But you can just take that website right there and type it into your, your, into your, uh, your computer and you'll get to the same page. Okay, so obviously you can pause this video and watch at a later date or you can just take that there and just grab it and go to it. And that will give you the opportunity to get these um, exercises, body movement stretches, movements that will help you to uh, reduce uh, low back pain uh, just by doing some exercises. And I didn't want to go over them in detail here because it would take too long to do that. But these exercises are ones that we prescribe to our patients um, just to start off. And, and if you have any kind of pre-existing conditions, um, I would recommend that, that you be careful when you're doing them. And if they do cause you any discomfort, that you uh, refrain from doing the exercises that cause you discomfort. Okay, so let's see here. Okay, so lastly, uh, I want to just share with you that, that we're here to help our community. This is one of the reasons why I do these talks. Uh, previous to COVID, we would go out to community organizations and businesses and do talks there. Let's see here. Can the website from the presentation be put on the chat? Um, I can, well, I can attempt to do that. I don't if know if I can, can do that. More. If you can send the uh, slides to me later, I can I, email them out to everybody. Would that work? That would be a good idea, Mark. I will do that. Okay. Thanks for that idea. Okay. So um, the last thing is, oh yes, you're welcome. The last thing I wanted to share with you is um, that we're here to help, as I mentioned. Uh, you may find that the exercise has helped with degree. You might find that some of these changes in, in uh, you know, having the right type of shoe or uh, exercises that you might do uh, or stretches you might do may help you. But if you're noticing that you're still having persistent uh, low back issues or anywhere for that matter in your spine, if you're having neck issues along with low back issues uh, as a doctor of chiropractic, uh, we've been helping our community for over 20 years and taking care of these issues. Um, I do not uh, uh, advocate uh, any kind of uh, signing up for any kind of a long-term plan ahead of time. Uh, we don't do that in our office. I don't uh, make you pay for anything up front. That's just not our way. It's uh, inappropriate. Um, you come in, we get your history, we do an examination. I give you my best recommendation on care. And if for some reason, the best recommendation is not something you can follow, then we're willing to help you however you can uh, to a degree, because obviously there's a certain level of care that might still get you where you're going, but there is uh, also a threshold. And uh, we may point you in the right direction of doing something different if it's not uh, gonna help you. Um, in other words, if you only can come in once every few weeks to start off, that's not necessarily gonna help you. Ah, look at that. Perfect. Copied it right on there. Thank you for doing that. For top, or the, I, the, uh, the, U, the URL is right on the chat now. Okay. So what I want to share with you is if you are interested in coming in uh, right here, there we go. So you can come in, have an examination consultation done. It's going to charge you $47. And our normal fee is $115. All you need to do is give us a call. I'm sorry, text that is, don't call it. You can text that number as well. Um, just text it instead. It'll be easier for us to go back and forth with you on that. Uh, you can do it anytime. You can do it now. You can do it in the middle of the night for all I care. Uh, you text our number, text the number. Uh, let us know that you were at the program. Type, you know, just give, give us the code library21. Nope, not for low back issues only. The question is, is it special only for low back issues? No. You can come in if there's any issue that you're dealing with that you think that we might be able to help you with. And I don't know if we'll be able to help you, but we'll at least determine if we can. And if we can, then we'll move forward. If not, I'll give you the best recommendation as to what you can do. Um, but uh, Library 21, put that in there with your name. 
and uh, we'll reach back out to you knowing that you re attended the program and we'll give you the opportunity to come in and have the evaluation done. Now, I am going to have the offer expire here because I think that immediate action does reserve, does deserve the immediate re reward. So give us, you know, contact us within a month. We'll give you some time to think about it. And uh, also understand, and this is the fine print down here, if you can't see it, fine print says, unfortunately, Medicare, Medicaid, uh, we cannot uh, offer these discounts due to federal law. Um, so you will have the opportunity if you're interested in doing so. But uh, without even coming in, as I mentioned, the, the exercises will give you a good head start and give you the opportunity to do some things on your own, um, along with the other uh, suggestions that I gave you during this program. And so uh, I, this is the most unconventional way I've ever done a program before because uh, uh, I had uh, technical difficulties, but I hope that it was entertaining and informative. And I hope that you, uh, uh, if you have any questions. Um, yeah, feel free to unmute yourselves, folks, if you want to ask a question. Yeah, now. and um, I don't know if I actually, no, I actually did not. Yeah, the, the only information I have on here is our, uh, is our phone number, as I mentioned before, listed on there at 610-935-5900. Um, and uh, we are located, uh, that, that picture that you saw, you may have driven by it here or there. This uh, building right there, it's an old home converted into an office before I even got there. But uh, it's a nice little setup we have. And we are located uh, right on Egypt Road at the corner of Longford and Egypt, uh, right there in Oaks. So we're still, still a Phoenixville address, but uh, we are in Oaks. Okay. So does anybody have any specific specific questions that you would like to ask? And if not, that's perfectly fine too. Just want to give it the opportunity. Um, I, I don't have a large screen, so I can't see everybody, Mark, um, who's listed on here. Okay, but that's fine. Anyone have anything? And if you have any questions, like I said before, you can feel free to contact us, but also if you send us a message uh, via text to that number, you can post any question on there. Okay, so are there any special exercises that you recommend for deteriorating uh, discs? Uh, let, me, let me go back over to that because that question just, let me go back to the chat screen for a moment. Okay, deteriorating disc, uh, disc four and five, like L4 and L5. Um, so some of the exercises that were on the program that I provided you, there's a um, there's a uh, th uh, there's a few exercises on there that will allow you that will give you some support in that low back. But there are some specific exercises for uh, lumbar uh, issues. If you want, if you want to, uh, when you contact me, send me your email when you do contact um, via text. And I'll be happy to send you over some specific exercises for disc issues. Um, these exercises help with age-related arthritis. That's another good question. Age-related arthritis. Well, arthritis is something that occurs as a result of poor biomechanics in any part of the body. It can be, oh, you're welcome, Kara. Um, Age-related arthritis can happen in any part of the body if mechanics are not moving properly, joint, bio, joint biomechanics are not moving properly. And so will the exercises help with that alone? It will help to support to a certain degree. And by that, it will help to minimize the discomfort, but will it help to do anything for the arthritis directly? No, not for the arthritis. Um, joint motion, in other words, adjusting in the spine or any joint for that matter in the body, shoulders, knees, wherever else can help to realign the, the spine. And then there's other things that need to be done to help to um, manage the curves in the spine as well. Uh, and it depends upon if it can be done. Sometimes age-related arthritis has already gone too far. It's kind of like uh, if the front end of your car is misaligned uh, and the wheels have worn a lot, you, you have to replace parts in order for the body, in order for the car to, to work properly. Well, you can't replace parts in your body so easily. So you have to make do with what you have at given point. So um, the answer is that you can do stretches and exercises that will help to support and reduce pain to a degree, but it won't necessarily affect the arthritis. Hmm. So fibromyalgia, um, stretching, 
that's really the the issue there is stretching, supporting the body and in, in, in strengthening and stretching. Um, but is fibromyalgia is a little more complex. I wouldn't say that just exercise alone is going to help with fibromyalgia. There's there's it's multifaceted. Um, adjustments really help a lot with fibromyalgia because it is a neurologic type of an issue, and chiropractic adjustments help to uh, effectively modulate the nervous system to help the body to. Uh, uh, to help the nervous system to function better. So uh, fibromyalgia really does, we get some good results uh, through chiropractic intervention, through adjustments, but there's also uh, nutritional considerations as well as, as well as stretching. Hope I answered that question for you. Okay. Um, all right, are there any other questions? Feel free to come on screen or you can type them. Okay. All right, I'm not seeing any more. Uh, there we go, okay. Okay, oh, so nutritional considerations for fibromyalgia, is that we're that's what we're talking about there. Um, inflammation. Inflammation is the, is the issue with fibromyalgia, uh, as well as other uh, type of health issues as well. So it's really about um, reducing inflammation in the body is uh, in, a, in a nutshell. And how do you do that? Well, there are certain foods you want to avoid, omega-6 type foods, uh, fatty foods, uh, fried foods, uh, white flour, uh, sugars, things like that. That's going to help to reduce inflammation. But also, if you uh, inject, if, if you also um, include in your diet foods that are more omega-3, so um, you're talking about like fish, uh, um, salmon, but also supplementation, um, you can you can use uh, curcumin, which is in um, what's the spice now? Curcumin is in um, not curry; it's in turmeric. Ah, there you go. Hey, you, you beat me to it. Um, yes, so turmeric, uh, but you get certain quantities. You want to have a little bit more curcumin, so there are supplements that you can take. Garlic is fantastic as well. Ginger is fantastic. Uh, there's a number of different anti-inflammatory foods that you can use in your diet, but really it's about cleaning up the diet, getting rid of junk food. Uh, and, and people that generally have fibromyalgia have, have learned to a degree that, that they that they should do this, uh, at least that I've come across. Um, the question is, is it easy to do so? It's obviously challenging in our, in our world of delicious food that you can come across. And uh, so I, I would say that trying the best you can to reduce inflammation would be uh, one of, the th one of the things regarding nutritional considerations. I have a question. Yes. Oh, it's echoing. Um, thoracic back. Yes, Donna. Exercise for the thoracic back. Exercises for the thoracic back, okay. Um, you know, we, we could definitely get into that. Um, there's, a, um, there's exercise for every part of the body, really. Uh, and, and the question is, what kind of exercises can you do? Well, it depends upon your circumstance, really. Um, and, and I don't know your specific situation, but uh, if I had to pick up one exercise for the, for the thoracic spine, um, I would consider the idea of doing rowing. So using a rower, um, using some weights and uh, kind of, um, let me put this down for a moment so I can kind of show you, like using the weights and pulling inward like this. So if you're using weights, you can use bands, you can use um, hand weights by bending over and pulling upward. That would also work them back. But if you have a rower or access to one, that would probably be my go-to exercise for, for the thoracic spine area. But again, the question is, is that gonna help the problem by itself? I, I don't know. Uh, I would say that if you're interested in looking further into this a little bit more, talk to me and we can, investigate this together. Thank you. You're welcome. I mean, we can get into, we can do another program at another time for uh, specific exercises for the, for the mid torso area, uh, or for that matter, for the neck, um, stretches for the neck exercises. Uh, there's all sorts of things we can consider here, but uh, it's all very specific to each individual person. We try to be very general with the programs that we're providing here because it's uh, each person may come to this with different issues, uh, degeneration or not, not degeneration, younger, older. There are some general things we can definitely suggest and 
this exercise program I provided you for the low back is fairly general. So utilize that and enjoy that. And as I said, any questions that come to mind uh, after this, feel free to text me at that number. Uh, that's our office line, but you can text me there and, um, and just pose your question and I'll try to answer it as best I can. Thanks everyone. And we'll always also send out the uh, slides from tonight too. Yep. Thank you. Very, thank you everybody for attending. Thanks, Dr. And, and keep, keep in mind again, that the yeah, consult will be available for a month uh, that examination special. Okay. So take advantage of that if you're interested and reach out. Right. Have a good one again. And thanks again, Mark, for uh, giving me the opportunity to uh, sure provide thing. some useful information. Yep. Okay. All right. Take care. All right. Night, Bye, everybody. everybody. Bye. Good night.